Good afternoon, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, we have a Greek news, uh, pronews.gr, reporting terrifying impact 130 meters underground from a Russian supersonic uh, Kinzhal missile at NATO Command Center in Ukraine. And uh, they do show video footage of this. It is uh, a um, Russian report there. Uh, well, I say Russian, maybe Greek instead of Russian, but uh, yeah, it appears to be Greek. But at any rate, there they're showing the actual uh, strike, uh, the location where it was hit, not what you're seeing on social media for uh, for some degree. There, uh, it was a, a supersonic missile, missile traveling over 12,000 miles an hour. Uh, when it struck the, the base there going underground. Russia said they've pulled out about 40 people out of the uh, debris thus far. Uh, there is believed to be about 300 though all in, that were killed, that were buried inside the ground uh, there at this NATO command center. Both American, Ukrainian uh, troops there that were killed in this particular blast. Uh, now with all that going on there, of course, Russia is stepping up its attacks. They do control the skies over Ukraine to some degree. Uh, but uh, then you have other issues that are also taking place around the country. This was kind of interesting here. And this come from a Ukrainian soldier there as he talks about. Uh, I ask him how he copes. Situation there in, on the, near the front lines. He said it's scary, and I think about the tens of thousands of dead. Tens of thousands of dead. And uh, of course, he gets very emotional about it, understandably so. Uh, people that he would see during the daytime smoking with him, he says, and then by that evening, they're all gone. Uh, so, no doubt, a very emotional time for that particular Ukrainian soldier. And now, though, Ukraine is preparing their, uh, preparing their offensive, uh, their spring offensive back against Russia. Uh, they have a, as you can see, a large number of tanks supplied by the West, by, by Germany, armor personnel carriers, etc. They're getting ready to launch their offensive against Russia. And uh, quite frankly, I'm sure Russia is very much aware of where they're all sitting at. Uh, they were videos, footages coming out of all these being underground, uh, coming out as well. So as they're preparing the offensive there against Russia, I am sure Russia is prepared to uh, strike back. And so uh, will it just end up being another major bloodbath? Will it just be that Ukrainians end up suffering massive casualties as a result? Only time will tell as far as that goes. Also to today, President Trump was officially indicted and that has brought outrage even from unexpected sources, uh, such in the case here of the former uh, Vice President of the United States. Listen to what he had to say here, Mike Pence to Wolf Blitzer on CNN. As you well know, as all of our viewers know by now, voting to indict the former President of the United States, Donald Trump. He's now the first President former president in American history to be criminally charged. It's a really significant development. I want to get your reaction to this unprecedented development. Uh, well, I think the unprecedented indictment of a former president of the United States on a campaign finance issue is an outrage. And, and it appears to, uh, to millions of Americans to be nothing more than a political prosecution that's driven by a prosecutor who literally ran for office on the pledge to indict the former president. But it was, of course, uh, Wolf Blitzer does uh, kind of uh, fight back a little bit on that statement there, uh, claiming that there were 24 uh, uh, grand jury members that indicted him. And of course, uh, it goes back again to Mike Pence. He says you only need 12. He said, if you ever remember about law, it doesn't take even a, a very much of a burden of proof to be able to indict someone. And of course, out of 12 members, all you, or excuse me, out of 24 member uh, indictment jury, all you, or grand jury, all you need is 12 for the indictment. Uh, so yeah, I, can, I do see where it's politically motivated, but at the same time, it's only going to cause Trump to raise in the polls. Uh, he is becoming a symbol. Uh, to the world, to the American people. And uh, Ron DeSantis also uh, uh, issuing a fire response uh, to Trump's indictment saying Florida will not assist in the extradition request. It is un-American, as he states there. So you, there's a lot of support that is going on uh, for the former president. 
and a lot of people condemning it. So uh, I, I can only see that this is going to definitely play in his favor. I have a feeling that this was, not, you know, of course, the indictment is, is certainly something going on the Democratic side, but I'm sure Trump will eat all of this up. It'll only give him a greater success in the polls. Um, also here, uh, Comrade Colasso posted here this particular video, a very interesting video. Uh, this is a school... Uh, and Teachers sure. carry guns, just in case. Show me your weapons and tell me what they are. 45, sir. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the school actually is there, but it is a school in Texas there, a uh, private school there, and the teachers are armed. Uh, they believe, uh, like, uh, if, if more schools were like this, the situation happened in Nashville, uh, Tennessee recently, where a, gu a gun shooter there uh, had gunned down several people, including teachers and students, that that could have been prevented. Let's listen into what they're saying. 45. Mr. Assistant Pastor, this is the 45. Yes, Director of Security, 45. The pastor carries a 45 in a case that looks like a Bible. The principal is also armed with a 38 semi-automatic pistol. How many of you feel safer knowing that your teacher has a gun? All of you. In New Mexico, many of the teachers carry guns. Just I apologize. That's actually a school in New Mexico where this takes place at. And, of course, as he said at the very end, asking the students, how many of you feel safer that the teacher carries a gun? All of them raise their hands. Um, so very interesting uh, report there that uh, Colasso uh, brought out for us there. And this is a story that's kind of uh, very dear, especially to my daughter's heart there. Uh, she has also, she's actually done a news piece on Ella's Animal News back when she was a little bit more active there. She's gotten away from that a little bit lately. Uh, but uh, Lolita, the killer whale that was went into captivity at about the age of seven years old, was captured. It's been in prison in Miami Aquarium for the last 50 years. Well, that whale is finally going to go free. Uh, as long as everything still stays as planned, the, the whale will be trucked across country to Washington State and will be set free uh, to go back into the Pacific Ocean. And I'm sure that'll be a difficult uh, thing to do after 50 years in captivity. But, you know, my wife actually said to me, she says, what if the whale dies? And I said, you know what? I guess if I was the whale, I'd rather die in freedom than in captivity. It says here, executives with the theme park, Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine and Cava volunteers for the Friends of Lolita Group and Indianapolis Colts owner Jimmy uh, Ursay, who has agreed to bankroll a move that will cost millions, unveiled plans to return the 57-year-old 5,000-pound killer whale to its home waters of the Pacific Northwest. Levine Kava called the agreement historic and a great day for Miami. So many have hoped and prayed for this result for many, many years. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, Ariella had also joined this fight here for the freeing of Lolita, uh, had done a news piece about this. And so we are also delighted to hear that that's actually going to finally take place there. Uh, anyway, as you guys know, we are actually down here in Florida, Northwest Florida right now. Uh, for the past, my father passed away while I was here on Friday. Uh, we will be burying him tomorrow. We do covet your prayers. This has been a very, very difficult time, not only with that, but also on uh, the investigation of my wife's father's death uh, is another thing that we've been working on here as well while we're here. Uh, that has, uh, is now going to be able to go public, and it will be going public very soon. At least one part of that will be. Uh, and, uh, and I will also be bringing some of that out myself uh, because of some of the accusations about these uh, seven laws there that uh, the Orthodox community is trying to perpetrate all over the world uh, because it has a lot to do with what has happened to the, tra the tragedy that's happened in our family. So we don't take, we, we, we uh, take very personal when those attacks come against us because we know what it's cost us already to be able to deliver that message to you. And uh, it has cost us dearly in this family. So we're going to finally get to be able to tell that story, uh, but we're going to do it in a very, very uh, logical way, very strong way to where we can really lay that out for you so you know what went on. And then also uh, we want to ask you, if you would, if God lays upon your heart to please support the broadcast here, uh, we can't do it without you. And uh, especially in this particular time of need that we have right now, 
uh, online would really be greatly appreciated right now because of the fact of having to to be here, and uh, and 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 it is a certainly a a burden there that we we were carrying there, and we really thank you for your love and your support. So, Danoon Institute, PO Box One Five Six, Sunbright, Tennessee Three Seven Eight Seven Two is our mailing address. But if you donate online, that would certainly, definitely, definitely help us, and we really, really appreciate. Um, your love and support of this broadcast. God bless you and thank you for listening.